Hey guys, what's up? My name's Ines. I write kissing books and today I'm having a bit of a breakdown because romance has so much history behind it. Do you know your romantic roots? Let me break it down for you. I presented my first academic paper on romance. It got rave reviews and I'd like to present it to you in two parts because it was over 30 minutes long. It's entitled From Bodice Ripper to Book Talk. Are you ready for this? Romantic elements and themes have been a part of storytelling from the beginning of time. It's no wonder, as one of the biological functions of humanity and of all creation is to propagate the species. Some species, like most flora, do it mindlessly. They cast their seeds into the wind and hope for the best. Other species perform the act forcibly, like the great white shark, where the males are known to bite the female's pectoral to ensure she doesn't move while they lay on the ocean floor and think of England. Humanity's stories of love have run from a man tossing a woman over his shoulder and carrying her off, to marriages arranged to increase power, to courtly love filled with bad poems, to swiping right for a no-strings hookup. The irony of modern love is that it has come full circle between the pages of a romance novel. The chest-pounding alpha male is back in vogue, as is the marriage of convenience, only this time both stories end with a happily ever after. This essay delves into the rich tapestry of romance literature, tracing its historical roots from ancient civilizations to its modern manifestations. It explores the transformation of romantic narratives, highlighting pivotal moments like the emergence of courtly love and the rise of bodice ripper novels in the 20th century. Within the contemporary framework, the essay examines the symbiotic relationship between romance novels and digital platforms, particularly social media communities such as book talk, detailing their transformative effect on the genre. Furthermore, it offers a critical examination of enduring and emerging romance tropes, analyzing their significance, evolution, and cultural implications within the broader romance narrative. The narrative thereby provides a holistic view of the romance genre's journey, intricately intertwined with societal shifts and technological advancements. It's difficult to pinpoint the very first romance in human literature. However, the bones of the genre are there in numerous ancient texts. From the earliest recorded histories, human literature has been captivated by tales of love. These narratives span cultures and epochs bearing testament to love's universal language. In ancient Greece, Longus's Daphnis and Chloe depicts the growth of love between two foundlings, while Homer's The Iliad emphasizes the powerful allure between Helen and Paris, showing love's potential to influence great events. India's revered epic Ramayana showcases the enduring bond between Rama and Sita, complemented by the romantic tale in Kalidasa's Shakuntala, which delineates the intricacies of love, separation, and eventual reunion. Ancient Chinese tales, like the Ballad of Milan, focus on familial love, where stories such as the butterfly lovers capture tragic romance. The tale of Sinui from Egypt expresses a nostalgic love for one's homeland. The Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh centers on the deep friendship between its titular character and Enkidu. Roman classics, including tales from Ovid's Metamorphosis and Virgil's The Aeneid, weave various facets of love from enchantment to tragic romance. Lastly, ancient Persia's Khosro and Shirin underscores the motif of star-crossed lovers. Collectively, these texts, spanning diverse cultures, affirm love's timeless and boundless presence in literature. In the modern era, the landscape of romance and literature evolved through a tapestry of cultures and periods, shaping key elements of the genre we recognize today. By the medieval period, Courtly love emerged, epitomized in works like Tristan and Isolde, where forbidden love and chivalry intertwined. The Arthurian legends further enriched the genre, blending romance with heroism. As the Renaissance dawned, prose romances such as La Mort d'Autor narrated multifaceted love stories, while pastoral romances such as Sir Philip Sidney's The Arcadia celebrated love in idyllic settings. Shakespeare and his contemporaries further redefined romantic themes, experimenting with both joyous 
and tragic outcomes. Shakespeare and co. also introduced motifs like star-crossed lovers and mistaken identities and played with both happy resolutions as well as heart-wrenching tragic ends. Together, these periods sculpted romances enduring tropes and themes forming the genre's foundational pillars. In the 18th and 19th centuries, literature witnessed the transformative rise of the novel period, during which romance played a crucial role in evolving and refining narrative structures and themes. The 18th century saw Samuel Richardson's Pamela, which addressed romantic elements as well as societal issues, particularly those of morality and class distinction. As the century progressed, the atmospheric gothic romance subgenre emerged, characterized by its brooding settings and melodramatic plots. It brought to the fore writers like Anne Radcliffe, whose works infuse romantic narratives with a sense of foreboding and mystery. Transitioning to the 19th century, the scope of romantic literature broadened and diversified. Jane Austen emerged as a monumental figure, merging social commentary with romantic plots in novels like Pride and Prejudice. These tales, set against the backdrop of a socially stratified Regency England, highlighted the nuances of love and courtship. On the other side of the moors, the Bronte sisters introduced a more turbulent take on romance. Jane Eyre, by Charlotte, and Wuthering Heights by Emily, for instance, explored themes of love entangled with issues of identity, morality, and societal constraints. These works, with their darker undertones, are also aligned with the Gothic romance tradition, depicting romance's multifaceted nature. When the 20th century came around, romance was ready to take center stage. Though the romance novel would undergo significant transformation, evolving in both form and substance to reflect contemporary societal shifts before becoming the best-selling genre that it is today. Before these love stories would be downloaded to e-readers, they first went into pulp magazines. With their inexpensive production, pulp magazines brought romance stories to the masses, making the genre more accessible. However, it was the foundation of Harlequin in 1949 that marked a turning point. Specializing in romance, Harlequin played a pivotal role in standardizing and popularizing the modern romance novel, establishing conventions that continue to influence the genre. In the middle of the century, both readers and authors looked to the past to bring modern romance to the forefront. Kathleen E. Woodywis penned her groundbreaking work, The Flame and the Flower, in 1972. The work took place in the 18th century, specifically 1790, and follows the trials and tribulations of an orphan girl in her tumultuous relationship with an American sea captain who takes her forcibly, thus earning the genre the nickname of Bodice Ripper. Bodice Ripper novels typically featured strong, virile male heroes and young, often feisty female protagonists. The term bodice ripper itself refers to the tendency for these novels to include scenes of sexual passion, where in the throes of passion, the male character might rip the female character's bodice, which was a fitted waistcoat-like garment worn by women in the 16th to 19th centuries. These scenes were typically written in explicit detail, and the novels were known for their intense emotion, drama, and themes of female submission and male dominance. As the century progressed, the romance genre expanded to capture the zeitgeist of the contemporary period. A notable subgenre that emerged was new adult romance, spotlighting protagonists in their early 20s as they grappled with both adulthood's complexities and evolving romantic relationships. Novels such as Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire and Easy by Tamara Weber became hallmarks of this subgenre, resonating with readers navigating similar life stages. Romance's pervasive influence wasn't confined to books. Film and television embraced the genre with adaptations ranging from Jane Austen classics to contemporary series like Outlander. This cross-media presence amplified the genre's impact, introducing romance narratives to a wider audience. Concurrently, Online platforms witnessed the burgeoning of fan fiction communities where enthusiasts penned romance narratives. Many of these amateur writers transitioned to publishing, further enriching the genre's landscape.
the latter part of the century also signaled a conscious shift towards inclusion and diversity within romance novels. Characters became varied, representing a broader spectrum of ethnicities, sexual orientations, and abilities. Bolstered by this trend was the hashtag own voices movement, advocating for narratives penned by authors who personally identified with their characters' marginalized backgrounds. This push for authenticity and representation heralded a more inclusive era for romance literature. In essence, the 20th century was transformative for the romance novel, from its formalization and widespread accessibility to its embrace of contemporary themes and inclusive narratives. The genre matured, mirroring society's changing face while preserving its core essence, the exploration of love in its myriad forms. The history of the romance novel is a reflection of changing cultural norms, societal values, and technological advancements. From its earliest incarnations to its modern diversified form, the genre has both shaped and been shaped by the world it represents. With this advent of digital media, globalization, and more inclusive storytelling, the romance novel seems poised to continue its evolution, captivating hearts and minds for generations to come. In fact, this current generation is making their demands of this genre known on a social media platform known as TikTok. That's the end of part one. Be sure to tune in next week as we go from Bodice Ripper to Book Talk. Want a more in-depth exploration of pacing? Try out my Patreon of Pacing course, How to Write a Binge-Worthy Novel in 21 Days at anestwrites.com forward slash PTP for Patreon of Pacing. You can also read more breakdowns and chat with others on my free Substack at anestwrites.substack.com. In the meantime, you guys go get them words and I'll try to keep it together until the next time that we break it down. I'll see you then. Bye.